Hi there, welcome back to Gay Tale Crafts. I'm Sarah Scully, and today's video is all about another installment of my natural dye uh, recipes and experiments that I've been doing over the last year or so. So the next one, as promised, is um, called Queen Anne's Lace. And this is another flower-based recipe. Um, Queen Anne's Lace, as you may be familiar, is often used in floral arrangements as kind of a filler flower. It has um, beautiful little tiny flowers that are gathered together in large clusters and um, it's very delicate looking as the name implies it does sort of look like antique lace and the color that it gives can range from yellow into sort of greener shades. Um, now I'll give you the full details of my uh, experiment on the blog as usual you'll find the link below this video um, so you can check it out step by step but what I thought uh, was interesting was that we got a very pale color um, from this batch. Now I'm not too surprised by that um, because we didn't use a huge amount of the plant itself. Um, Queen Anne's Lace in Vermont grows and blooms in, I would say, July through August. And um, I kind of caught it at the tail end of its peak period, so there wasn't a lot um, available for me. Um, but I thought it would be interesting to just, you know, try it out and see um, what we could get. So we used about two cups of fresh flowers um, to dye two of these skeins, and these are um, 100 gram skeins, so 200 grams. Um, so again, I'm not surprised we didn't get a dense color. Now you may not think that that's even any color at all. It almost looks, um, at first glance, just like undyned yarn. But if you compare it with the yarn that I started with, um, you can see there is a change um, in color. And actually, I'm quite pleased with this. It's subtle. Um, it almost looks like antique lace, um, kind of that uh, color that some older textiles will get as they oxidize and sit in a drawer for, you know, 100 years. They'll kind of get that sort of yellowing effect. Um, this does have a green undertone. If you compare it with a, with a really strong yellow, you can definitely see a greeny undertone. Um, and I would be interested in trying it again at a stronger strength um, and maybe with some pH shifting or some kind of post treatment. I'll have to read more about that. Um, but you can you can shift it into the green family and I've definitely seen some people come up with like a sage green, um, which would be you know an interesting color to get by itself without having to over dye uh, a yellow to get a green. So that'll be maybe something down the line we can try. Um, maybe next summer I'll, I'll hit the Queen Anne's Lace at its peak growing period and be able to get a stronger color. Um, once again, this is a pretty easy method. It's, it's kind of the standard, uh, you know, boil the plant material, sift your water, put your mordanted yarn in, and then um, cook it for half an hour, 45 minutes at sort of a medium heat and then let it sit overnight. Um, it's, it should be color fast. I've, I've been doing some reading and, and this one should be color fast, so it shouldn't fade in the sun. And uh, the rinse water, um, I only had to do one rinse on it. So another quick and easy one, if you have access to fresh um, Queen Anne's lace in your area, it would be a good one to get started with if you have access to that. Now, um, it is autumn here, and so I don't know how many more natural dye recipes I'll be able to squeeze in before the cold comes. I have squirreled away a few um, gleaned and grown items um, to play with over the winter, so I hope I can uh, talk about those in future episodes. One is gonna be marigold, and one is gonna be avocado pits as soon as I save up enough avocados, um, because I'd love to get a pink color in my little arsenal or rainbow that I've been creating over time. Um, and as I alluded to in a previous episode, I'm looking long term to take some of these naturally dyed yarns and make a uh, kind of a representative shawl or scarf or something um, that represents the local landscape. So for the colors that I can harvest on our farm, putting those together and making some kind of a place-based garment with those colors I think would be really fun. Um, if you have ideas for natural dyeing, if you have any suggestions for things to try, or if you've tried any of these recipes, I would 
I would love to hear from you and um, know what kind of results you got. Please leave a comment here or on the blog. And tune in next time. We're going to have a wrap-up of the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival. And um, I'll give you a preview of some stuff uh, coming up later in the fall. Thanks again for tuning in and happy crafting. <laughs>